Well, when I, when I was ordained, the the, uh, the uh, I might as well still the official master in seventy one. In seventy one, I was ordained in nineteen seventy one. The the present mass became official in seventy three. But there was a uh, there was a, a transformed, slow changing. Actually, and Father and I went in the library, <clears throat> and there was a, a missile uh, with that intermediary change where, where parts of, of this mass was, was in English, uh, and the other, and most of it was in Latin. You remember that, that book? But in 73, the Novus Ordo Mise, which is the, the name of the English mass, of the Immaculate Mass, uh, was, did not become effective until 1973. After two years, I was a priest. And when that okay. You said it in Latin. Do you understand what you said? Apparently he is. <laughs> I have uh, uh, my history. Uh, history is my major, and Latin is my minor. <laughs> I taught Latin at uh, St. Louis High School, and I had the equivalent of six years of Latin. When I started my studies in philosophy, our uh, textbook was still in Latin. Okay. So I'm the last group. Mm -hmm. To have to use it and, and have to know it. So, so could Father say this no. mass not understanding Latin, or do you have to understand Latin? You have to, Latin? have to understand the, at least the consecration no. and uh, have no. a, a general okay. gist of the rest of it. Okay, okay. Good question. And what was that little towel thing hanging off your arm? That's called a manifold. Uh, in the old days, it was originally meant for the times before there was air conditioning, and it was used as a handkerchief. The priest would also use it to blow his nose. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, later on, it became, she loves that. <laughs> now it became just a decoration. Now, that was, uh, that was made optional. It was never abolished. But it was made optional when the new mass uh, came in in 73. Probably most of them didn't. <laughs> Can you hear me, Father? Father has trouble hearing me. Uh, my voice is not strong. That's really Unless you're talking about him, then he can hear you. How do you like my story about the man who couldn't find the right cross? <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. Well, let me ask you. So even when you said the mass in Latin, your homily would be done in Latin too? No. The new homily you could speak in the mass. Uh -huh. Growing up as a young boy, the mass was in Latin, and the homily was in French. Oh, I'm from <laughs> and my pastor was French Canadian, <clears throat> oh. and so he was a very uh, proper individual. He liked to be formal. So for Christmas and Easter, he would preach in formal French. And if I wouldn't have had four years of French, I would have had no idea what the hell he was saying. <laughs> Languages can you speak? <laughs> Three. Three French, English, and Latin. Cajun doesn't count as a language. Cajun is, Cajun is actually a very excellent French. <laughs> it is, it is the, the classical French. Where when I took French in high school and college, rather the seminary, we had to do all these uh, famous. Uh, uh, Authors like Voltaire and Molière, uh, Guy de Maupassant, Alphonse Daudet, and read their readings. That was classical French. And guess what? The Cajuns in the class knew it better than the teacher because that was at that time that that was the way we spoke. That's the, they spoke like we speak today. Oh. The, uh, <coughs> word choices, the expressions, uh, pronunciation. 
Yeah, they were hilarious because they were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> and Trump talking about Father Pai, you can't hear me just with. Leva Manum Tuam, raise up your hand. <laughs> no, we're videoing it so that if people have questions or answers, and it can also help those who watch this on Homebound. So just a reminder, please, any questions and answers, just speak up. <clears throat> well, I'm glad you told me because God knows what I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can do the Mass in Latin, you can do the Mass in English, you can do the Mass in French, apparently. I do. Which do you prefer? French. French? It's my first language, I'm most comfortable with it. Cajun French. Cajun French, hi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Obviously. Obviously, okay. I say mass in French once a year at the, the uh, CFMA uh, building in Lake Charles, the Cajun French Music Association. Uh, and we have mass in French once a year. Uh, if there's a special request for any particular reason or a celebration, um, we will uh, the request mass in French, I, I accommodate that. Especially now that I'm retired, I can do it a whole lot more. Knowing uh, Latin beforehand, did it help with French a lot? No, knowing French helped with Latin. Latin yes. You played it backwards. So yes, because yeah. French it. and Spanish and Italian and Portuguese and Romanian are five Romance languages. Right, they're right. they're yeah. derived from the Latin language. That's what I was getting So yeah, when, yeah, when I started my studies in Latin, uh, learning <clears throat> the vocabulary uh, was very easy because I, I'd find the, the French in there, you know, like the word necessary, Latin, necessitas, in French, necessite, you know, uh, I'd see that the word came, so it was easy to uh, to, to uh, pick up vocabulary. The verbs were, were hard, you know. the, the verbs were hard to learn, you had to memorize, brute memory. So you can say the first language, French? Yes. I didn't speak English until I started school. Okay. And most of my class was the same way. Well, you said the other night that your, Wednesday night, that your, your father never, he always, he never spoke English, right? right? And he forbade English to be spoken at home. <laughs> For two reasons. <clears throat> Number one, he didn't understand it. And he didn't want us to say anything. <laughs> 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 number two, number two, he would say it was French is for home and English is for school. And the result of this is most of us who spoke French first and spoke French at home, we were able to learn uh, a better English grammar than those who spoke English first. The grammar, we, we use a better grammar. Any more questions? Now, Father, um, does every diocese have a priest, to your knowledge, who says the Latin mass, the old mass? <clears throat> as, far, as far as I know, yes. It's at least one. Okay. At least one. And in my diocese, we're, we're uh, six of us. Are there any places or any societies or religious communities that just still use the Latin nowadays? Yes, the Fraternity of St. Peter is a good example. And um, there's other orders that, that use his own Latin. Uh, Christ the King, I think, is the name of an order. I think they use only Latin. They teach in English, but they use Latin only, only Latin for their, their liturgy. That includes baptisms and marriages also? Two out of five, everything. I've never done a wedding in, in Latin. I've done baptisms. I was the uh, uh, chaplain for the extraordinary form in my diocese for years. So when uh, we had kids that uh, uh, wanted to be confirmed in, in the old right, the bishop would delegate me to Laughing. I met a lady named Joan. I don't know if she's here. No, she's not. No, Joan left. Yeah. 
I was telling her about a girl I, I confirmed in the old right. Uh, name, she took the confirmation name, John the Mark. And uh, Joanna Alexis. Well, she was proud to say that. <laughs> That's my confirmation name. Oh, really? Yes. That's fine. How many of you remember your confirmation name? I was trying to remember mine. Now, would you recommend that a parish have a Latin Mass every week or every month? What do you think? Father, if there's a need for it. Okay. When Summorum Pontificum came out, the Pope Benedict's uh, motto proprio, I got the impression <clears throat> that he was reallowing this Mass uh, basically for people who never really adjusted to the changes. And there, there were some, there was some. There was some in Lake Charles. Uh, there's not, not that many anymore. I know that because I buried it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think that was the idea <clears throat> that the Holy Father had. And then, then it uh, developed further where if people would be uh, familiar with the Trinity Mass, uh, they would they would uh, be able to compare and uh, make a, a deeper appreciation of the English Mass. Because there's not a dime's difference between the two. Mass is Mass. What I said today is just as much Mass as Father will say tonight, and I will come celebrate with him. Just as much Mass. No one's not better than the other. And Pope Benedict made that very clear. If there is a, a group of people who are inclined <clears throat> to this form of spirituality uh, and, and request it, and there is enough number to merit uh, a Latin Mass in the parish, well then it, it should be done. The, the way I'm understanding Simone Pontifi. Also, it's possible for them, if it's a big, big, big parish and they have a big, big group, uh, it's also possible to open a parish and, and have it just the old right. Uh, some of the religious orders who say the old right will be in staffing problems. Diocesan uh, the priest does not, does not, we're, we're short. <clears throat> I bet this diocese like mine could use instantly 20 more priests and then still not, not be able to meet everything. It was beautiful. I mean, the mass today was beautiful. It really was. Even though I didn't understand the word of it hardly, I knew what you were doing based on what I know of the mass. Yeah, I could the figure same, it out. The same order. You right. The introduction, the opening prayer, readings, gospel, homily, offertory, communion, um, consecration of the canon. It's the same order. Yeah, I, I have to admit, I like being able to participate in English more, of course. Sure. Yeah, I found the greatest thing yeah. is the other bubble of the prayer, you know. Yeah. And we all yeah. say the yeah. whole yeah. prayer. And I said, yeah. yeah. and you said, and I said, but you couldn't figure it out. Right. And I can back to the priest now and say it in that time. I can come back to the priest now and say it in that time. That's good. It's a pros and cons. Right. Yeah. You know? What was the question? We can't hear back. I, I said I, I like the fact that nowadays the priest faces the conversation. Yes. Okay. I mean, to me, that's important. I like to see some of these talking. Okay. I'm seeing the trend of the English masses as the priest and the people. Uh, the priest is a presider, considered the presider, and, and he uh, works. You know, that, that's the advantage. The advantage of the old way with the priest. Uh, well, I, I resent when they say the priest says mass with his back to the people. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> He's not, that's not the intention. The priest says mass facing the tabernacle. Right. Mm -hmm. And he is the leader and he, the people follow him. And what's in the tabernacle? Christ. Right. So, so the, that's the priest's job to, to lead people to Christ. And I've told people before, I said, you know, when, when Moses uh, exiled, was exiled from Egypt and the, and, and the people of God, when Moses led these, these people out of Egypt, 
He didn't walk backwards so he could face him. <laughs> That's my argument. <laughs> The beauty of it in, in the Catholic Church, it is, it is big enough for everyone. It's big enough to handle people who prefer the old mass and, and benefit from it, and certainly big enough to handle for those who prefer the new mass. I mean, they're both equal mass, uh, equal worship. Uh, it, it, the church is big enough for everybody. That, that is what I think reallowing the old mass, as Pope Benedict did, uh, is bringing the cross to, to people, where there is no more uh, labeling, uh, he's conservative or she's conservative, oh, he's a radical, uh, this and that. Uh, that that's, that gets nobody in the race. That, that's good enough. But the church is being shown to be open to everyone. Myself personally, I love the old mass. And, and uh, my spiritual life is based on that liturgy. But I'll also tell you, without batting an eye, I wouldn't want to say it every day. <laughs> Once a month or so is enough for me. <laughs> Father, one, one, I have another question. Do you think we see the rise of the extraordinary form, what we saw today and celebrated today? We see that rising among young Catholics, after what you experienced last night, and for those to set the scene, last night he was shown videos of various masses where one, the priest, uh, and you can look these up on YouTube, where the priest had a Halloween mass, and uh, they dressed up, he dressed up as Barney to give the blessing. And people were dressed in various Halloween costumes. Or they had the uh, puppets mass, where they had the big puppets. And I've shown that to some of you. Oh, yeah. Father experienced that. And I'm sure there are a number of other liturgical oddities and abuses that are not videoed that happen. Priest dressing up as the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus. Do you think, and this is leading up to the question, do you think, young people who grew up seeing that form of worship, clown masses, whatever else, when they experience the extraordinary form and the reverence, the chant, do you think that's what's drawing them toward that? Or do you think it's bigger than that? It's bigger. Uh, you know, our, our young people are there's no doubt of they're beautiful, they're good, and, and they they hunger for something spiritual. They hunger for it. Uh, and, and all of these liturgical uh, experimentations, uh, that did not do anybody any good. I mean, it, it drew not only young people, old people away as well. I mean, <clears throat> with the, a young person today witnesses the uh, the extraordinary farm, and there is a reverence. There is something mysterious about it because they, they don't understand the language, but they they get a sense of peace and, and holiness because they hunger for that. In the meantime, Father, if they attend the, the old mass and then go to a uh, parish church, let's say St. Thomas, and, and you celebrate Mass with following the rubrics, you know, <laughs> we, we don't make the rules, we follow them. Following the rubrics and, and saying the Mass correctly and reverently, they will be attracted to that. They will be attracted to that. Anything novel, uh, we, we, that was the hippie ages. Huh? <laughs> Anything novel <laughs> does not attract young people. Young people are good, and they're searching for holiness, and they're searching for stability. They're searching for stability. They are good. They are future. Father, if you say a mass in French, 
would you use the missilettes we have now and just you would say the French part? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh yeah, the, the mobile sword, they the same mass. Same mass you you, you hear uh, at the same time. Right, that's what I, I didn't it's, know what you would have to do. being in English would be in French, it would be the same thing. The readings, <laughs> the readings would be the same and mm -hmm. everything. And the people that assign their responses to be French. I will not say mass in French to a crowd that doesn't know uh, because I'm preaching French. And if they, they don't understand okay. the repeating purpose. But they're using the English missile but they're just translating as they read along. If they don't understand the, the, the mass, they can follow exactly like it is in the missile. Same thing in Spanish. Well, you, they've got Spanish missiles. Yeah, they're Spanish. Do, do they, they have French missiles? Yeah, you can get them. That's what I thought. Uh, well, the missiles come in any language. Yeah. And it's the same. Yeah. The, the church is Catholic. Right. Yeah. Universal. Universal. The, the, the gospel read on Sunday, this coming Sunday, will be the same gospel read in China. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And some parts that a man doesn't have Okay, you are. Um, he sings it every now and then. I didn't hear any of that in the old preaching. Mm -hmm. Is it in there? I did what? The chanting. The chanting. Ch yeah. Sing it. Girl, you don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> uh, I sing like a bitch caught in a crack. <laughs> okay, you say it's chanting. <laughs> we do have in the old right, and I've done many, many, what they call a high mass. Yeah. And, and the, the high mass, you light six candles instead of two, and everything is sung, including the epistle and the gospel. The sermon's not sung, thank God. <laughs> and everything is sung. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for letting me know because uh, it's something I hadn't thought had about. Okay, I have a question along with that. Why bother associate? Why do you sometimes do the, the chanting and not every Sunday? It's optional. It's optional? Okay. Short of math. You don't want to get in a rut. You don't want to get in a rut. I like that. You can, uh, some parts you can do it in a row, if you don't want to. Okay. Oh, okay. It's still the same mass. Right, uh, yeah. When did you do a high mass? In the preschool. Now, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do a high mass for us? <laughs> no. once, once or twice a year, uh, my bishop does a solemn pontifical mass. And that is the, the highest of liturgies in the old life. It takes uh, an army of servers. It takes four deacons, I think. Couldn't do it. Believe this. I am three deacons. It takes two or four deacons, and it takes two sub deacons. It is, it is a Cecil B. DeVille's production. I get distracted. Really? You you bring up a question of why? Uh, let's say why I won't say a high mass. It's not that I can't say the Latin. I could learn how to say the Latin. The aspect of it is the rubrics okay I'd have to be able to understand fluently the rubrics because there's a lot more movement as father can explain to you of different small things that must be done that we don't do in the Novus Ordo father would you like exactly, to exactly exactly for example I'm asking you incense now to the, the, the rubrics, as he mentioned, are specified. For example, there's the <coughs> prayers that has to be said uh, to bless the incense and all that stuff. And uh, the, the, you, you shake it, the 
we're on the altar just so many times, 21 times I think it is, mm -hmm. but there's a special system that you got, you got to do. Uh, a high mass basically is a sun mass, okay, so it's a sun mass. And, and, uh, in, in the old days, the high masses supposedly uh, were the claimed uh, were, were a greater source of blessings. And, that's belonging. A mass is a mass. You know? uh, I, could, I could give you a, a good example, but I, I'd scandalize you about, about that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes they used to say, oh, so, so and so is having a high mass, and oh, Lord, it's going to be a big old thing. They said, yeah, it'll be a, so high, I'll have to bring my ladder to church. <laughs> <laughs> well, I noticed that you did a lot of extra movement, uh, extra, oh, yeah. well, one a part lot I, of... One part I got to do it five times in a, in a row. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh -huh. I, I mean, I noticed that from where I was sitting. You, and, and you turned around a couple times and moved to this side of the altar and that side of the altar. And worry if Father would bring the book for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> We agreed not to do that. He jumps up and do it anyway. Um, thank God he did. Thank God. <laughs> because it makes it very awkward for me. Oh, really? Uh -huh. and, and I'll never as a, say mass, say the old mass by myself. You no, know, sir. It is really complicated. Okay. That's hard to pull your favorite before at the same time. Oh, yeah. That's right. Before you walk. <laughs> now, you may ask about this. Yeah. yeah. That's the code. That is a reverence to the Eucharist. To make sure that it doesn't get lost. And if there's a crumb or anything uh, in the old mass, we do this after the consecration and it stays like this until the end of mass when we purify the chalice. And it is a matter of acknowledging and being reminded that the Eucharist is Jesus. And, and we need to respect it, and we need to handle it with care, not desecrate it. Also, in the purification of, of the, uh, I mean, uh, when the priest receives communion, uh, he, he uh, cleans the pattern up very carefully. Make sure that there's no crumbs, because uh, what did the crumbs? It's not angel dust, you know, it, it, it's the Lord. And at the end of Mass, when we, we purify the chalice, the priest scrapes the all the club of the oh make sure that there's there's no no crime because you see the the, the old man the latin master the host is not consecrated on the pattern it's consecrated on the court did you notice that wow. we put at the, at the offertory we put the pattern underneath the the Oh, I couldn't see that from my angle. I guess because you were higher up. Then, then uh, right after the Our Father, the priest removes it and pulls it this way so that he doesn't have to undo his fingers. You notice that, Father? It's, it's, just, it's a matter of acknowledging and respecting the real presence of Jesus in the presence of God. I'm on a roll, so you better okay. ask me. <laughs> any, any thoughts or about receiving the host like we've done today was strictly on the tongues. If we do it, <coughs> can receive it in the hands? Any thoughts on that? Uh, that receiving in the hands has been, been uh, allowed by a, 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 a Catholic conference of bishops. Okay. Um, For the United States. The United States. Uh, uh, Pope Benedict. When he was our sovereign pontiff, refused to do it himself. So, uh, but the, everybody has the right and must retain and maintain the right to receive communion on the tongue or on the feet. To receive communion standing or kneeling, everybody has a right to receive communion from, from a, a priest or a deacon. Uh, have a right. So, so I remember when lay ministers started, people wanted to receive from the priest, and they would hurt a few things, you know, like, 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 like,
it started to, to no longer be an issue. So okay. in your we went to a massive creek and they had a vista increase. I think it was somewhere in Africa. And boy, he was, he was hot on that. He did not like the fact that people would receive it in their hands. Mm -hmm. you know, he said, Black the reverence. Well, yeah. it, uh, the, matter, the matter he has to consider is a matter of, of, of uh, uh, obedience to right. the Constitution. Right. I mean, he's not the church. Right. He is within the church, not over the church. To me, when Rome has spoken, the case is closed. Um, and if ever, let's say, Pope Francis comes out uh, with a statement, I know he won't, uh, that once again the, the Latin Mass is forbidden, but that's the you know, I'm not going to be so thin. Or if my bishop says, no more, and that's the end. He might get in trouble for that. Then you can just move the boat in. We have to uh, remember one of the famous popes, uh, uh, I think it was uh, maybe the real first or something, who said the emperor is within the church, not above the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, that applies to all of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Father, no more questions? Well, would you give us your blessing, please? And we ask it in Latin today. Oh, okay. For us and those who watch on the video. Yeah, let's see how God will remember. Dominus Bobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus, descendat super vos et maniat semper. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father.